A big thank you to my beautiful friends at Squarespace for working with me on today's video. Morning, my beautiful friends and welcome back to another video I hope you have been keeping very well I'm super excited for today's video because today I am sharing with you five really fun and creative and delicious vegan breakfast recipes the difference with these recipes though is that they were suggested by you so I recently posted on my Instagram asking you for suggestions for a video that I'm working on which is called my subscribers choose what I eat in a week which is gonna be a lot of fun but the thing is that that I was so overwhelmed in a good way by the amount of amazing, amazing breakfast ideas that I decided to create a separate video <laughs> where I create your breakfast ideas and I make them vegan. So thank you to the wonderful people who have been submitting ideas and a special thank you to the five people who suggested the ideas for today's video. I'm really, really excited and I hope you will enjoy the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I also wanna say a quick thank you to my friends at Squarespace who are very kindly sponsored today's video i love them so very much and i create my website using squarespace and on my website i post the recipes from a lot of my videos which makes it very easy for you to go back to and to enjoy the recipes as well so if you've never heard of squarespace before it is a wonderful place to host and design your website a couple of things that i really love about using squarespace is first of all it is so great for bloggers because i use the blogging tools which is super super easy i upload the recipe i have it there saved and i can publish it when this video goes live for example as well as that it's great for people who are using social media because you can link your social media accounts to your squarespace website so if you run your own business or you're looking for a space to create your own blog or website i highly recommend using squarespace you can head to squarespace.com for a free trial and then when you are ready to launch you can head to squarespace.com slash amanda ducks and use my code amanda ducks which will give you 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or a domain thank you again as always to my wonderful friends at Squarespace for working with me on today's video. Let's get into the vegan breakfast recipes. Okay, so chocolate waffles with caramelized banana. What a ridiculously delicious idea. Let's start there. Uh, but to make these, I first of all started by blending flour with cocoa powder, brown sugar, salt, soy milk, vanilla extract, a little bit of olive oil, and a flax egg. I personally really like to use my blender for waffle and pancake batters as it makes it super smooth and super creamy. So if you have a blender, I definitely recommend using it. Anyway, I blended all of this together in my Vitamix until it was super, super smooth and creamy. And then I poured it into my hot waffle iron and allowed it to cook until the waffle iron told me it was ready. Essentially, it took about five minutes. To make the caramelized banana, I first started with two fresh bananas, which I peeled and then I sliced in half. Then I placed them into a lined baking tray. I drizzled some maple syrup on top and I also added some cinnamon and some nutmeg on top as well. I placed these into the oven and baked them for around 20 minutes at 190 degrees Celsius. And then it is time to serve them. Uh, I placed the caramelized bananas on top of my chocolate waffle. I drizzled some extra maple syrup on top and I enjoyed these very very much so they are packed full of flavor they're super fluffy and they make the ideal sweet breakfast Okay, these oats were such a specific request, but I was so down for it. I haven't cooked with rhubarb much in the past, but when I've had rhubarb compote, I have absolutely loved it. I first of all chopped some fresh rhubarb into small pieces, and then I added them into a small pot over medium to high heat with some water, as well as maple syrup, vanilla, and lemon juice. I stirred this all together and continued stirring every now and again while the rhubarb cooked for about 30 30 minutes. Whilst this was cooking, it was time for me to make the salted caramel sauce. And I made this on a base of almond butter, but if you are allergic, you could try making it with tahini. I'm actually really excited to try making it with tahini next time. 
I also added in maple syrup as well as maca powder and boiling water and I mix this together well. It may have a couple of lumps from the almond butter but it will still taste really delicious. Once it is all well mixed together I just set it to the side and kept it close because we are going to need it to make our crunchy caramel pecans. To make the pecans I started by chopping them up into fine pieces. I then added them to a non-stick pan with some of the salted caramel sauce and I fried them up until they were lightly crisped before removing them from the heat super super simple when it came to making the oats i also kept it very simple in a medium-sized pot i added oats as well as soy milk and some salted caramel sauce that i had made i mixed it all together and cooked it until it was nice and thick to serve i firstly added the oats to a bowl followed that by the rhubarb compote as well as some natural coconut yogurt the rest of the salted caramel sauce the crushed pecans and then i topped it with some fresh strawberries this is such a divinely decadent breakfast that is packed full of flavor packed full of sweetness and packed full of the most important thing at all and that's love <laughs> So I got a request to make an Australian big brekkie with Vegemite toast, bacon, eggs and beans. So that is what I did. The first thing I made was rice paper bacon, which you may know is something I make and enjoy pretty frequently. To make it, I slice rice paper sheets into even sizes and then begin making the sauce with soy sauce, olive oil, barbecue sauce, nutritional yeast, salt, pepper, smoked paprika and liquid smoke. It is super, super easy. Then I wet the rice paper sheets before running them through the sauce mixture, placing them on a baking tray and baking them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. When you remove them from the oven, by the way, you want to let them sit on the tray for a further 10 or so minutes so they lightly crisp up. Okay, onto the tofu scramble. I started by crumbling tofu into a bowl and using my hands as well as a potato masher, if that's what we're going to call it, uh, to break down and get that scrambled texture. I also then added soy milk as well as nutritional yeast, salt, pepper and turmeric and I mashed and mixed it all together well. From there you want to grease a frying pan lightly with some olive oil or some vegan butter and then pour the tofu scramble mixture in. You want to cook it until it thickens slightly and it begins to get like this golden kind of brown on some of the edges. And of course after that I made some of my smoky baked beans which are an absolute staple for me at the moment. I have been making them so frequently and I have also linked the full recipe down below for you to enjoy. To serve the breakfast, I toasted some sourdough and then I topped it with vegan butter and Vegemite. And this is the point where I really, really have some curiosity and I need to ask you, have you tried Vegemite? I know that a lot of my Australian community will have done so, but I am super, super curious about international members of our community and whether you've like tried it and loved it or tried it and absolutely hated it. Anyway, I personally love Vegemite toast and I served it with smoky baked beans as well as the tofu scramble and the rice paper bacon. And then I, of course, added on snow pea sprouts as per usual. This was a super filling, hearty and as always packed full of flavor brekkie i really hope you enjoy making some if not all of the vegan big breakfast i absolutely loved this suggestion as it perfectly combines sweetness with savory for brekkie i started by slicing cherry tomatoes as well as fresh strawberries and fresh basil leaves and then i placed all of this into a bowl then I very simply added balsamic vinegar as well as maple syrup and I tossed this all together super well. I toasted some sourdough bread, placed it onto a plate and topped it with the strawberry balsamic mixture. Then I topped this with snow pea sprouts as always and I enjoyed it as a very different but super delicious start to the day. So here's the thing, lemon curd is arguably the most difficult challenge I've had in the kitchen so far. I loved getting creative with it though and I am super keen to keep trying different ways of making said lemon curd. 
Anyway, the first thing I did was I mixed some corn flour and water together and then I set it to the side. Then in a medium saucepan, I mixed soy milk, maple syrup, lemon zest and lemon juice well before adding the corn flour and water mixture and continuing to stir. This is something that will thicken and combine well over time as you keep it over about a medium heat. Whilst it was thickening, I started making the French toast mixture. As we know, I love using a blender for many things in the kitchen and so in this blender I combined fresh banana as well as soy milk and maple syrup and I blended it all together until it was nice and smooth. Then I poured it into a bowl where I dipped four pieces of bread in and I soaked them well. Once they had been well soaked I placed them into a lightly greased frying pan and I toasted them all until they were golden on both sides. Okay, so to serve the French toast, I first of all started with my four pieces of French toast. I topped it with the vegan lemon curd as well as some coconut yogurt and fresh lemon to squeeze over the top. Like I said, this was a bit of a challenging breakfast but is super delicious and super enjoyable to create in the kitchen. If you do wanna try this out at home, it is linked down below on my website as all of the recipes from today's video are. Alrighty, my beautiful friends, that brings us to the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you love the recipes as much as I loved creating them. Thank you as always for being here, supporting me and my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it so much. It means the world to me and I hope you have a really beautiful day. I will talk to you and see you very soon. Bye!